Hello everybody, it's Keith Kelly here. Pleased to be with you. I've got a great story to tell you. It's in Exodus chapter 15. I'll read it to you. Exodus 15 verse 22. Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. And in verse 22 of Exodus 15 it says, Moses led Israel from the Red Sea. They went out into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore it was named Mara, which means bitter, bitterness. So the people grumbled at Moses. Now, just before this, they'd been dancing and rejoicing. But when things didn't work out for them, of course, they blamed Moses. <laughs> they started complaining. They, they cried. You know, why have you brought us here? There's no water. We're that going to die. It says in verse 24, the people grumbled at Moses saying, what shall we drink? So Moses cried in, out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. He looked around and he saw a tree, and it must have been broken off. He threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and a regulation, and there he tested them whether they would Believe him and trust him. Now that's a great story. You know, I believe it's a picture of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because have you discovered that life can be very hard at times? Have you discovered the bitterness of life? Now we're coming up to Good Friday. And Good Friday, why do we call it good when it was so bitter? So awful, the suffering of the Lord Jesus on that cross is unimaginable, the most horrible form of death. But through that cross of Jesus, he turned the bitterness of life into sweetness if we will believe him and open our hearts to him to receive his love, to receive his forgiveness, his healing power. How wonderful! You see, as soon as Moses threw the, the tree into the waters, a miracle happened. It was a miracle. And when Jesus died on the cross, it was a miracle. The Bible says he became sin for us. He took upon himself all our sin, all our sicknesses. In fact, if you go on in the same chapter when you come to verse 26 it says if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of the diseases on you which i have put on the egyptians for i the lord am your healer it literally means i am the lord who is healing you and they came to Elim with the twelve springs of water, seventy date palms. They camped there beside the waters. They came into a great <laughs> abundance of water and drink. <clears throat> now, you know, I believe today we live in a very cruel world, a very bitter world, a world which is out of fellowship with God. And I believe that through the cross of the Lord Jesus, what he did on that cross, he can take away the sins that separate us from God, the bitterness that can come into our hearts, the grumbling, the unhappiness, the, the lostness, and he can fill that hole in us, the God-shaped hole. He can fill it with himself. There's a lot of wonderful names of God in the Old Testament. There are what we call seven compound names that means the, the the jews 
had a great name for God. They never would pronounce it. It was spelt Y-H-W-H. We've tried to think how it would be spelt, and people have said it could be pronounced Jehovah, or it could be pronounced Yahweh. But whatever would have been the pronunciation, the Jews would never say it. And the first one here is Jehovah Jireh. And that means the Lord will provide. The first thing you need in your life is someone to carry your sins away. Someone to carry your troubles away. Someone to carry your sorrows away. I once heard a story about a man and he used to worry about everything. Anybody listening to me can identify with that. He worried about everything. He worried about the weather. He worried about his money. He worried about his health. And he met a friend, and his friend said, You know, I know a man. You can go to him, give him, pay him, and you can tell him all your worries. You can offload every single worry in your heart on him and he'll take them from you and you won't have to worry anymore oh that sounds wonderful so he went along to the man and he told him all his troubles and the man said well um are you going to pay me now he said well that's your worry <laughs> I don't think it's a true story, but it's got a point. We can come to the Lord Jesus and it doesn't cost you anything except that you should give your life to him and open your heart to him and say, take control of my life. And when you do that, you find, oh, your troubles are over. It says in the Bible, actually, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Now you'll still be tempted to worry. You'll still be tempted to have cares. But you can offload them. You can pass them on. To the man who can carry all your troubles for you. And his name is Jesus. He never gets tired of listening to you. Any time of day or night. You can come to him and speak to him. Tell him everything that's on your heart. And he'll carry them away. And then. <clears throat> we need someone who died to take the punishment for our sins. And that's what the Lord Jesus did. And he was called the Lamb of God. He was a spotless, pure Lamb of God, never committed sin in his whole life. But his Bible says he became sin for us. And he took my sin and your sin, the punishment for all our sins. And God, the Father said, you're free. Jesus has paid the price. It's like you're driving along and Say you get fined for going over the speed limit. I once went over the speed limit and I didn't mean to. I wasn't thinking. And whew, the police sent me a bill. I had to pay some money for speeding. But imagine if somebody had come along and said, look, I'm going to help you. I'll pay the bill for you. What would you say? Oh, no, not interested. I'd say. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, Jesus has done that for you. He's paid the price for you. He's taken the burden for you. The next one was in um, number two. We've read it in Exodus 15, verse 26. I am the Lord that heals you. Oh, how wonderful that Jesus Christ can actually heal you. He can heal your problems. He can heal your troubles. He can heal your worries. I've often told people that <clears throat> when I got married um, 50 years ago, it was actually this year, we didn't have any children. And uh, I really prayed. My wife prayed. We prayed. We asked people to pray. We didn't have any children. But eventually, God really spoke to me and said we were going to have children. And I believed him. And after nine years, nine years of praying, we had a beautiful bouncing baby boy. Now he's a bouncing baby or bouncing man. He's an adult now. 
and I was a missionary some years ago in Malawi, and I was lived in a village out in Malawi near Blantyre. And uh, I was telling my African friends all about how God can answer prayer. And I said, you know, for nine years we prayed and God gave us a handsome, good looking boy. Must take after his mother, I'm sure. But <clears throat> one of the pastors listening to me, he went home and spoke to his wife and he was having a problem because they couldn't have children. They'd been married, I think, about 10 years. And they, the, the wife's family were wanting him, her to get rid of him, get rid of the husband, because he wasn't giving her any children. It was a big thing in the, their culture. But the pastor said to his wife, well, if Pastor Kelly can have a child as a miracle by God, we can. And they believed God because of the testimony. <laughs> and sure enough, they heard a year later, they had a child. And then they went better than us. They had another child. Now that was um, about 30 years ago. But recently I had a letter actually from the miracle baby who was born to the pastor, but now he's a man. And the wonderful thing is, he's serving the Lord, he's an evangelist, preaching the gospel. That thrilled me. I am the Lord that heals you. We've got a God who can resolve and heal and, oh, take away mental problems and spiritual problems and physical problems and he can give us new hearts and new spirits. He can, he can make us new pe people in Christ. It's wonderful. The next one is Jehovah Nissi. That's Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 15. And it's really the Lord who is our banner. The Lord who fights our battles for us. When Jesus hung on the cross, it was as if he was the banner. He cried out, Tetelestai, it's finished. And he meant, sin is finished, paid in full, paid in full. It's a word they used when they went to the marketplace. You bought your food and then you, you paid for it. And they said, paid in full. If you were put in prison, say you served so many years, when you came out, they could give you a, a letter saying, Paid in full. And tetelestai means nothing else to pay. You can't improve yourself. You can't get to heaven by good works. It's the gift of God. By grace you're saved through faith. It's the gift of God. Paid in full. Oh, isn't this exciting? I think it is. <laughs> the next one, number four. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace. That's from Judges chapter 6, verse 24. Oh, can I ask you a question? Do you have peace today? Oh, God can give you such peace in your mind, peace in your heart. Oh, physical peace, mental peace, spiritual peace. I've got to confess, when I go to bed, I turn to God in prayer, and I, I seem to fall asleep like that. And I, because I've got peace in my heart, and oh, you can have that kind of peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. I just want to give you my peace right now. Receive the peace that I've got. You can receive it. When you go to a house, it says, say, peace be to this house. I often say, when I go visiting people, when I stand outside their door, I say, peace be to this house. <laughs> Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. Number five is a wonderful one. Jehovah Raha, the Lord is our shepherd. Amen. He cares for the sheep. He, he pours oil on them if they've got any wounds. 
like the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, he cares for us as his sheep. He leads us to green pastures. He leads us to places of fruitfulness and plentiness. Oh, it's wonderful. Next one, number six, Jehovah Sidkenu. That stands for the Lord, our righteousness. You know, we were sinners and Jesus was all pure, right in every way, right in every thought, deed, word, action. I was wrong. I was sinful, completely born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But you know what Jesus did? He changed me from being a sinner to a winner. <laughs> he changed my heart. He gave me his pure heart, clean heart, clean mind. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord is our righteousness. It says in the Bible, Jesus Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness and power. Isn't that wonderful? This minister was in Scotland and he went to visit a church to preach one Sunday. And they said that before the service, he was a little bit early, he said, could you go and visit one of our people, one of our parishioners? He's a lovely Christian, but he's dying. Could you just go and visit him before the service? So the minister said, yeah, fine. And he went to see the man. The man welcomed him. And he was a joyful believer, although he was near, near the gates of heaven, you might say. And the pastor said to him, Tell me, how did you become a Christian? He said, well, the Lord said to me, I'll exchange you. The pastor said, well, what did that mean? He said, well, the Lord took my old self and gave me a new self. He took me and gave me a new person. It's no longer I that live. Christ lives in me. Would you like a new self? Would you like to get rid of that old self who's always failed, always sinned, always worried, always gone wrong? You can be a new person. Jesus said it. You must be born from above. A new creature. Wow, this is dynamite. Doesn't everybody need to know this? It's powerful. Yeah. And then the last number seven, Jehovah Shammah. That means the Lord is present. The same Jesus who walked the earth 2,000 years ago is here today. I believe he's here with us today on this broadcast. I believe that as you call upon him, you can be forgiven, saved, healed, transformed, whatever your need, you can call upon him. I just want to finish with, <clears throat> I, I'd i like to go through the whole Bible, tell you the truth, because it's so wonderful. When I was a schoolboy, one day our, our headmaster took us for a religious education lesson. I, I'm from Liverpool in England, and um, <clears throat> I went to quite a strict uh, grammar school, it was really, and um, the headmaster you know, he used to walk around in a black robe and he was very strict. Everybody was afraid of him. But this day he took us for scripture. That was unusual. But he, he seemed quite human this day. And he read to us from Isaiah chapter 53. And um, he said this was written about 800 years before Jesus came. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, but it's an amazing story. But it, it says, it talks about Jesus being a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. It's as if somebody was there at the crucifixion. But of course, Isaiah was writing it 800 years beforehand. And it says, he was despised and forsaken of men. That's so true of the Lord Jesus. Even at the cross, he would spat upon and they pressed thorns on his head. We remember on Good Friday that he was taken to the cross, whipped, half dead. He was one whom men hid their face. They didn't want to look at him. He was so awful. 
he was despised and we didn't esteem him. We didn't think highly of him. <clears throat> Keep in mind what that man said. The Lord said to him, I'll exchange you. You know, when we've been despised, when we've been rejected, when we've been, oh, shunned. Jesus suffered all those things so we could be accepted, loved, <laughs> beloved. And it says in Isaiah 53 verse 4, Surely our griefs he himself bore, and surely our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. In the actual translation, it's this, you know, it says in verse 4, Surely our sicknesses he bore, and our pains he carried. I believe the Bible teaches healing for body, soul, and spirit. Full salvation, Jesus purchased everything for us. That's why when he came to earth, the Lord Jesus, he healed all who were sick. But he didn't, didn't just heal them, he forgave them. And he, at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, they were changed inside so they could love God with all their hearts, all their souls, all their minds. They were transformed. Oh, how wonderful. It says that he was... People thought he was smitten of God and afflicted. But it says he was pierced through for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment of our well-being fell upon him by his scourging. We are healed. Oh, I don't understand it, but I know Jesus took it all on himself. He was made sin and sickness and all these terrible things for us. But the good news is, now you mustn't forget this, the good news is, that isn't the end of the story. When our headmaster told me this story about Jesus, how it was so accurate in all the de details, read it for yourself. Oh, the details are so accurate, it was like an eyewitness, but the Holy Spirit knew all about it, of course, who inspired Isaiah. But I went home from school that day and I had a very kind mother. She'd have a, give me a cup of tea and maybe a, a cake or something, you know. <laughs> Wasn't good for my figure, but it was great for my well-being. And um, I got a Bible out and I read Isaiah 53. I thought, wow, this is dynamite. And I really, it helped me believe that the word of God, the Bible is the true. It's powerful. It's alive, it's living, it works, and it'll work in your life if you believe it. It says, it, as I said, it wasn't the end of the story. In verse 10, the Lord was pleased to crush him. It had to be to deal with sin, to deal with this fallen world, to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to crush the serpent's head, to destroy the devil's power. Totally and completely. It says he will see his offspring. He'll see his children. He's talking about Jesus. He'll see his spiritual children. You see, they thought he was dead. But Isaiah said, but he's going to see his children, spiritual children. He'll prolong his days. But we thought we put him in a tomb. But three days later, the tomb was empty. In verse 11, as a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. The Lord Jesus ascended to heaven. He, he appeared to his disciples at one point to 500 who were there. And then he left them. And he ascended to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. I'm sure all the angels were praising him, praising the Father, praising the Son. And then they said, 
okay, blessed Holy Spirit, go <laughs> and make these people down there who are praying and waiting, make them like Jesus. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people turned to Christ. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. And it says in, if you go on to the next chapter, we, we can't have time to read all the Bible, but it's a shout for joy. O oh, barren one, you have borne no child. Break forth into joyful shouting. Cry aloud, you have not pre prevailed. And it goes on, enlarge the place of your tent so, so you can have more children. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Well, I think I've said enough. What I say to you is call upon him today. I'm going to pray. And you can pray. You pray, you say to the Lord, please forgive me my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose for me. Come into my life by your Holy Spirit and fill me. Make me new, make me clean. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Who I did that <laughs> many years ago. I called upon him. Actually, it was, uh, I was just counting, it was 63 years ago. I called upon him. And I, oh, honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. The best thing I've ever done in my life. And it'll be the best thing you ever do. You call upon him, let Christ come into your life. Then get in touch and let us know what's happened to you. We'd love to hear, we'd love to pray for you. And if we can help you with any free literature, we'd love to give it to you. So let me just pray. Father, I thank you. For this wonderful gospel thank you for that healing tree that cross of christ which takes the bitterness out of life thank you for the cross of christ which takes away our sins and our worries our cares and our sicknesses all that the devil's tried to put on us lord you've given us a way of escape through the cross thank you that you died for us lord but you didn't stay dead you rose again victorious I just want to praise you today, Lord. I want to praise you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for this glorious gospel. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>